Welcome to this video on how to calculate the total impulse of a rocket motor. So this program is called Open Rocket, and you can see I've got my rocket there that I've drawn up. That's the 3D finished view. I can also change the view to the side view. Um, generally, when I'm working on the rocket, I like to see the side view because you can easily see all the components. There's the back view with the motor there and the launch lugs. The 3D figure which looks quite nice. Then the 3D unfinished, which is there, and you can see the rocket motors in the back there. And then finally, as I showed you earlier, we have the 3D finished view. So what we want to do now is we actually want to um, do a simulation with the rocket motor to actually find out its total impulse. So if we click on motors and configurations, we can actually add a new configuration. So when we click on that, it's asking us, all right, there's a body tube, what motor do you want in there? So we're gonna click on select motor. And the motor we're going to use for this GNOME rocket is actually the A10. So it's the A103T, and the ejection charge delay is three seconds. So that's the three on the end there. As you can see here, it actually tells us that the total impulse of the motor is two newton seconds, which is 60% of what an A could be. Average thrust is 2.48 newtons. Max thrust is 12.6 newtons, so that's a bit more than the 10 that it's rated for. So the 10 is actually the, um, the average thrust. And then you've got the burn time there. So we're gonna try and calculate this two newton seconds. We're gonna try and calculate it using the simulation. Um, and down the bottom here, you can see the thrust curve. So lots of thrust early on at the first 0 0.2 seconds. And then the motor burns out by 0 0.8 seconds. So we're going to select that motor. And you can see it says A10-3, so the three second timing delay. Now the next thing we're going to do is click on the simulations here. So we can delete that first simulation. So we're going to go new simulation. And it already has some wind speed values in there. That's fine. It's actually not going to affect our, our calculations here. It's so going to have simulation options. Um, and you're just going to leave that there, just showing you it's got a spherical approximation. Um, we could play around with that, but we won't. So when we click simulate and plot, uh, it's asking us what sort of data do we want to export. So this is if we want to plot data, time, and thrust. You could delete that as the y-axis and you could add altitude, vertical velocity, vertical acceleration and so on. But as I said, we're gonna do time on the x-axis and thrust on the y. I'm just gonna scroll down. There it is there, thrust, and the units of thrust are obviously newtons. I could potentially click on all these flight events if I wanted to add them, um, which is fine. I can actually remove them in the next step. So when I click on export data, I'm just checking. All right, I'm exporting only two of the variables, that being time and thrust. Um, and I'm going to include the simulation description, which will be at the top. I'm going to also include the field descriptions, that being time and thrust, but I'm gonna remove the flight events because if I leave that on, my Excel file is gonna have lots of cells with some writing in them, and I actually don't want that. So I'm gonna click export. I'm gonna actually save it over this file. And there we go. So if you go to where you exported the file to, this is the GNOME Total Impulse Calculation. If I open up that Excel file, it's got simulation one, 348 data points for two variables. And my two variables there were time and thrust. So if I scroll down here, you can see that by by 0 0.8 seconds, I've actually got no thrust. So that's actually the motor burnout. So the motor's finished by then. Um, what I'm going to do is actually see if I can find the total impulse. So for the total impulse, before we do that, I'm just gonna show you, I could actually plot time versus thrust. Too many. Here we go. Insert, we want an XY scatter chart and we can add a line. 
And there we go. So this chart, if we add a bit of a contrast there, that is our th uh, force, so our thrust in newtons versus time graph. And I'll leave that in black there and put time versus thrust. And with this graph, I can actually just make it a little bit bigger. And I can actually add some chart elements. So the chart element I want to add is not a trend line, but my axis titles. The horizontal axis was obviously time, and that was in seconds. And the vertical axis was thrust in newtons. Now the reason why I've plotted this graph for you before we begin is just to show you when we're calculating the total impulse of the motor, what we're doing is we're actually calculating the total area underneath this graph. So that area would be equal to thrust versus time. Now that'd be easy if this the area of this graph was a nice square. But instead, we're going to use this method where we chop up the graph into lots of little slices and calculate all those little areas and then get Excel to add them up. So to do that, we're going to use a function and I'll just move this image to the top so we don't lose it. Cool. There it is there at the top. So I'm just going to move that out of the way. Now, if I just zoom in over here, these are the two cells that I'm looking at. So what I want to do is I want to calculate the average thrust of these two cells and multiply it by the time difference between these two cells. Now what we're going to do is insert a function so we can actually approximate the area under that graph there. So the function we're going to use is equals sum of B6 plus B5 and bracket divided by two. Now so that Excel doesn't get confused, we'll tell that to do that operation by itself and once it's finished that operation multiply that by the difference in the time here so that'll be a6 minus a5 and bracket and press enter so you can see that the impulse for the first 0 0.01 seconds is 0 0.0018 so on newton seconds so instead of typing that in for every cell i'm just going to grab the grab the corner of that cell and drag it all the way down until we reach that point there, where you can see that the rocket motor has no more thrust, therefore no more impulse. So I actually can get rid of the function from that cell, and then I can tell Microsoft Excel to actually just add up all those numbers there. So it's automatically recognized that I wanna add C5 to C194. If that didn't happen automatically, what you can do is click Select and just highlight the cells. And there we go, that was correct. C5 to C14, press enter. And there you go. So Microsoft Excel has just added up that just then of all those different little impulses. And it's given me a value of 2.033 Newton seconds, which is actually very, very close to what we anticipated. So if we go back here, we go to the motors and configuration, and we double click on that motor, it said its total impulse was two Newton seconds. And as I said, we got 2.03, so that's really, really good. So, so far what we've done is we have plotted the thrust versus time graph, um, we've used the XY scatter plot with lines and with labeled axes, and we've also worked out the total impulse by using our function there and then getting in total two newton seconds. So that's 2.03 newton seconds.